Hi guys, so this was going to be my big epic chatty end of the year 2019 reflections video. But now I'm so glad that Pauline from Dancing Lawn has created her reading retrospective tag because as it turns out I wouldn't really have known how to structure this video in a way that it's not just me rambling on and on and you losing interest within a minute or so. So I'm glad that I have this tag and Pauline's questions to give this video some structure. But first, a few general remarks to start with. Um, on the whole, I have quite ambivalent feelings about my reading year. On the one hand, I'm really glad about the number of books that I read. Not the number as such, but I'm glad that I kept reading throughout the year, even when my work got really stressful and demanding of my time and attention. And I'm glad that I kept up the practice of reading every day for pleasure, because not only did it keep me sane, but I also downright feel like it kept me from becoming a non-person, as I feel like so many people in my field are, to be honest. However, I could have wished for more quality in my reading. I have read so much crap this year, and so many books that I picked up that turned out to be total trash came highly, highly recommended either by virtue of having won all the awards or because they are dearly loved by the internet. So I'm not listening to anything you guys say anymore ever again. <laughs> no joking, but I do think that I have learned a lot this year about what to put my faith in and what to listen to and what to largely ignore. Some of my plans and intentions for a better reading year 2020 will come up in the tag, so let's get on with it. Pauline has asked us nine questions about our reading year 2019. And the first of these questions is, which book that you read this year would you recommend to anyone and why? And I think that this is such a hard question because, well, with fiction, it is always such a hit and miss thing and a book that touched me emotionally and that I feel made me a better person perhaps by touching me and by m maybe making me feel empathy towards a certain group of people might leave somebody else totally cold or might just not work for them style-wise. And of course, with non-fiction, there's always the chance with any one book that I pick that half the people who view this video have read 20 books on the same subject and will be able to tell me exactly why my pick is a bad book. <laughs> but nonetheless, I did pick a non-fiction book. I picked this vintage mini on austerity. This book is composed of chapters from two books by former Greek finance minister and international left icon Yanis Varoufakis. And it is about why austerity measures don't work, or at least why they don't work towards the ends that the advertised ends that they are supposed to be there for, but how their real purposes are actually just to keep the rich rich and keep the powerful in power. This is quite a dense read actually, and I think that in the two books that those, um, the excerpts in this book are taken from, um, which are And the Weak Suffer What They Must and Adults in the Room, these books will probably have more in-depth explanations of economic terms and contexts. Um, but this is still a good starting point, I think, and a very important topic in our time. Question number two is, which book that you read this year has taught you something new? And, I mean, I guess with almost every book that you read, almost every book, you learn something new and you will read about something that you haven't read about before. But I have had really few wow moments this year, very few revelations. And I feel like I'm at a point in my life and my education where very few things will actually be really new to me and what I should have done would have been to read more memoirs and autobiographies because these by definition tell you something new because 
you are not that person that you are reading about. Um, when it comes to broader contexts, I feel like <laughs> there's really, apart from hard science, there's very little that would be completely new to me. So this would be a resolution for 2020 to read more memoirs. But I didn't want to leave this question completely unanswered, so I picked A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James because it taught me something or it made me read up on Jamaican history. On the other hand, history is my daily bread, so while I didn't know the details, the thing itself, by its nature, was something very familiar to me. So it's at the same time new and old. But for the next question, I don't even have to put my hand down because um, that question is, which book that you read this year came just at the right time when you needed it? And that is also A Brief History of Seven Killings because I picked that book up just um, at that point that my work started to become extremely stressful and almost monopolized all of my attention. And I needed something that I could pick up for an hour or so every day and get completely immersed in, but that wouldn't make me feel compelled to keep reading all the time. And this book was just that, because while it is very immersive, it is also very intellectually challenging and quite exhausting to read. So after my designated hour each day, I didn't feel like I just had to go on reading this book, but I was actually glad <laughs> to, to get a break from the book and return to my work, just as I was glad to be able to return to this book every day at lunchtime. Question number four is, which book that you read this year will stay with you for a long time? But this question I will leave unanswered because I really can't tell at this point which book will stand the test of time. For instance, at the beginning of the year I read Tin Man back in January and I still think that this is one of the best books that I read this year, but at the time it made me cry so hard. I think I, I started crying on page three and I didn't stop until the end. But right now when I look back on it, I, I feel hardly a thing. Like I said, I don't think that it is a bad book, but it just it hasn't stayed with me emotionally to the extent that I would have thought it would. So I'm not going to name any one book here. Question number five is, which book that you read this year expanded your reading horizons by being from a new genre, new author, new theme style or format, etc. And this is the year that I really started reading poetry collections. And I don't mean anthologies or the collected works or selected works of any one author, because I, I read those in earlier years as well. But I mean poetry collections that were conceived as collections from the outset. So, for instance, this year I read um, Death of a Naturalist by Seamus Heaney, which I think was Seamus Heaney's first poetry collection. And I also read The World's Wife by Caroline Duffy. Um, serious Concerns by Wendy Cope, which is a very curious and funny collection, and Falling Awake by Alice Oswald. And I don't think that before this year I ever read any poetry collection that was conceived as a collection before. And I do want to keep doing that in 2020. In fact, I want to read much more. In the first half of 2019, I made sure that I read a poem every day, usually in the morning, um, except of course when I was on a holiday or didn't have any time at all in the morning. And I want to resume this practice in 2020, and this time specifically only with poetry collections of this kind. Although I am at the moment reading um, selected works, selected poems by Ted Hughes, and I think I have at least one or two more poetry collections of the selected poems kind. So I guess I'm going to throw these in as well. But I am 
already on the hunt and on the lookout for cheap copies of poetry collections. Number six is a good one. Which bookish things did you particularly enjoy doing, purchasing or using this year? And I saw three of my favorite authors this year and had books signed by them. And they were all three complete surprises because I learned about their coming only days before they came because I never keep up with things. Back in May, Brendan Sanderson came to Bonn on book tour and of course I learned about it too late and there were no tickets left by the time I heard about it. But he held an open signing at the event, um, at the venue before the event. And I went there and got my lovely hardcover copy of Words of Radiance signed. Um, this, this is where he signed it. And, um, and I realized, well, not for the first time, but I think I had forgotten how lovely the end papers are in this hardcover edition. I think the the pictures that I took, the picture that I had taken of me and him at the signing and the picture that I took of the end papers are my two most liked Instagram posts of 2019. And then a couple months ago, the keynote speaker for a really small congress at my university was Jan Asman, who is an Egyptologist who has written a lot of cultural theory and he won the Peace Prize of the German Book Trade in 2018 together with his wife, Alida Asman. And he was very influential to me, especially one of his books um, on, on cultural memory, as he calls it. And I read this one not for history or Egyptology, but in fact in my first year of German studies and it left quite an impression on me. So I brought my copy to the event on the off chance that I might get a chance to accost him after the lecture. Um, and there were even two young people who had also brought books. And so I didn't feel like the most impertinent and annoying fangirl in the world and got my copy of Das kulturelle Gedächtnis signed by Jan Asman. Yippee! And then about two weeks ago, I browsed the university's website's homepage by total chance. I don't ever do that normally. And I noticed that German science fiction author Dietmar Dart had been invited by the Department of German Studies to read from his two latest books. And of course, I also brought a book to that event, Pulsarnacht by Dietmar Dart, of course. Um, because at this point I have no inhibitions left when it comes to things like that. From now on, I'm just taking books to every event. And you, you won't guess what happened. I actually, um, earlier that day, I, um, I had brought this book from home, but I went to the bookshop to get the book that he was actually going to read from, which is, um, it's called Neptunation or Neptunation, or Neptunation, it's multilingual, um, but I couldn't get it at the bookshop. I went to the biggest bookshop in town, which is really big, three stories high, and they usually have everything in German books. It only ever happens with English books that I can't get what I want to have. Um, but they didn't have this one. And I told the author about it when while he was signing my book, and he just gave me a copy. How nice is that? Totally my new all-time favorite author. No, but seriously, I love what he does. And actually one of the main reasons why I haven't filmed a favorite contemporary German books video is that Dietmar Dart's book Pulsarnacht, the one I got signed, would feature very high on that list. And of course, that one hasn't been translated into English. And that would be a shame, I think, if I gushed about this book in my video and only very few people who watch this video could even read it. Please do let me know what you think about that and if you would think that annoying. Number seven, who are some booktubers, subscribers or other bookish friends that you got to know better this year through watching, comments, personal contact online in real life or otherwise? 
And of course, I haven't been that long on BookTube, but I do feel like I got to know some people better. Of course, there is Shannon, first and foremost, my first buddy reading partner from the channel That's So Po. Of course, I'll, I'll link everyone below that I can link. And I had a great experience buddy reading with her, even though we both disliked the book that we read, which was The Overstory by Richard Powers. But of course, Reading that book would have been even less fun if it hadn't been for the buddy read. <laughs> so thank you, Shannon. I also feel like I got to know everyone a little better with whom I also interact on Twitter. Twitter has been real fun this past half year, more so than it was before. Um, and so there's Maria Hill, for instance, from MH Books, who hasn't made videos in a while, which is a shame. And there's Kathy Grimm, who is very active on Twitter, and also Jason from Byways in Bookland, whose comments I always adore as well. And there's also my regular commenter, Justin, whose comments I always appreciate very much as well. Um, he's also on Twitter. I'll link your Twitter, Justin. Hope you don't mind. So my first half year on BookTube has been real fun and really companionable. So thank you all for that. Question number eight is, what booktube videos did you particularly enjoy this year? And I have to say that the, the videos that I still enjoy and appreciate the most are ye old wrap-ups and single book review videos, because that's what I'm here for, to learn about books somewhat in depth and to learn what people think about them. But I, of course, I always appreciate a well thought out themed video. Question number nine. Did you discover a new all time favorite book? And actually five of my best reads of the year have made it onto my all time favorites list on Goodreads. And a sixth is in the making. And for me, this is very, very good indeed. But I did read a lot of books this year. Um, but I won't say what the books are because A, spoilers for my favorites of 2019 list and B, they might not stand the test of time after all. But for now, I am very happy with that harvest. And number 10 is to tag your favorite bookish people. And I usually get very annoyed when people don't pay it forward with tags, when they don't tag other people and just say, oh, whoever wants to do the tag should do it. Um, that's like pulling the ladder up behind you, you know. But in this case, I will actually say just that because this is such a specific tag and it might clash with other plans that people have for the end of the year, the beginning of the next year, because there are so many videos to film, so many lists to do. And so, and, and I'm also pretty late. It's already the 30th today that I'm filming it, it's probably going to go up on the 31st, so New Year's Eve. And whoever still wants to do this to, should do it now. But let's make it a resolution for 2020 that I will do the same tag video earlier next year when there's still time to tag people who will then still have time to do this tag and to, to make it work with whatever other plans they might have. So I wish you all a very happy New Year's Eve, however you are celebrating it or aren't celebrating it. I've been enjoying all those end of the year lists and reflections, videos and texts on other platforms. And I'm looking forward to all those that are still going to be filmed and uploaded. I'll see you on the other side. As we say in Germany, guten Rutsch. Bye.